a rich man whom God had blessed with an abundant harvest. He had no place to store the harvest. But instead of sharing his produce with others, with the less fortunate, he tore down his barns and built bigger barns. Then he thought to himself, he said to himself, I have all that I need for the rest of my life. I will eat, I will drink, and I will make merry. But that very night, the Lord said to him, You fool! This very night, your soul will be demanded from you. Then who will get all that you have stored for yourself? In the same way, we are only storing and storing for ourselves and our families. The more we get, the more we want. We are never satisfied. We are delighting in the blessings rather than delighting in the Lord. Psalms 37 verse 4 says, Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. We are delighting in the blessings and that is why our heart's desires are not met. We are not satisfied. But when we delight in the Lord, He will make sure that our heart's desires are met. He will make sure that we are satisfied. He will make sure that there is nothing missing, nothing broken in our lives, there is nothing lacking in our lives. The Samaritan woman, she had five husbands. She was not satisfied. There was something missing in her life. And to get that something, she lived with another man who was not her husband. But the moment she encountered Jesus at the well, all her heart's desires were fulfilled. She was satisfied. In the same way, the rich man who came to Jesus, he was lacking something. He was a rich man. He had everything that he needed. He had kept all the laws and the commandments. Yet he knew that there was something missing in his life. And so he came to Jesus to know what was that something that was lacking in him. And Jesus told him, you lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. This man went away sad because he was a man of great wealth. He had a lot of money, a lot of property, a lot of wealth. He did not want to give away his wealth to the poor. He had made his wealth his God. He was clinging possessively to his wealth like the rich fool. I, re I remember when I would organize the retreats in Pune, the priest from the divine word, he would tell me, Beta, you're doing a lot for the kingdom of God. But you are not sitting and listening to the word of God. I know you are busy organizing the retreats. You do not have time to sit and hear the word of God. Why don't you, you and your team members come to Hyderabad and attend a full week's retreat? And he would also tell me, Leave your lottery business and come and join us. Leave that business. What business are you doing? Leave that and come and follow us. He was saying, come and join us. Join our ministry. And I would tell him, Father, you know I'm married. You know I have two sons to take care of. So today if I look back, I know for sure Jesus was calling me to leave my business and follow him. But I was depending on that business for my family's survival. Today I'm depending on the job that he gave me. He does not want us to get comfortable. He wants us to move out of our comfort zones. He led Abraham out of his father's house to make him the father of many nations. He led Joseph out of Israel to become the ruler of Egypt. He led Moses out of the palace to train him in the desert so that he could lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Jesus himself was led out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
We need to move out of our comfort zones and go and share the good news to others. The Samaritan woman went back into the town, the same town that had rejected her. She called them to see Jesus, to experience Jesus in their lives. She was not selfish. She wanted to share what she had received from Jesus. Though the people hated her for who she was, she cared for them and led them to Jesus. What about us? Have we encountered Jesus? And if we have encountered Jesus, then have we shared Jesus to others? Again, we have the demon-possessed man. When he was set free, he did not want to leave Jesus. He wanted to be with Jesus, follow Jesus everywhere. He wanted to be connected to him. He did not want to leave his presence because he found that in his presence there was fullness of joy. He wanted to be connected to him. He did not want to leave his presence. But look at us. The moment we get our healings, blessings and miracles, we say, thank you Jesus. Bye-bye. See you soon. And very soon, we have to come back to him because now, the problem has increased seven times. Jesus instructed this man who was demon possessed to go and share to his family members all that the Lord had done for him and how the Lord had mercy on him. This man not only went to his family, but he went to 10 cities. He went to the Decapolis and shared what the Lord had done in his life and how he had mercy on him. He cared for other people. He knew they also need to encounter Jesus. Do we care for other people who are lost in the world? If we care, then do we go and share the good news to them? The blind man whom Jesus healed by spitting on the ground and making a paste of mud with his saliva, when his eyes were opened, his neighbors and those who used to know him as a beggar recognized him and said, is this not the man who used to beg? Some said it is he, some said he looks like him. But this man said, no, it is me, it is me, it is I. And they asked him, how were your eyes open? And he said, the man, he, the man called Jesus, he made mud and smeared it on my eyes. He told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I went and washed and I received my sight. He could not keep his mouth shut. He went and told others what the Lord had done in his life. He wanted to share with others what he received. He wanted to be a blessing to others. Are we blessed? Yes. Have we been blessed to be a blessing to others? Or to keep the blessing to ourselves? Are we going around and blessing others? Yes. Praise God. Again, we have the blind man at Jericho, Bartimaeus. He was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard the commotion, he asked the people, what is happening? What is all this commotion about? And somebody told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people began to rebuke him. They shouted at him, be quiet. They got annoyed because this beggar was shouting loudly. They were getting disturbed. They were getting distracted. All those righteous people who were with Jesus, following Jesus, were getting annoyed because of a beggar who was shouting. Many times in church also we see these situations. Somebody's phone is ringing, somebody's baby is crying, we get annoyed. Can't you take care of that baby? Can't you switch off that mobile? You have come to worship Jesus. You keep your focus on Jesus. Why are you getting distracted? Matthew was not distracted. He kept shouting, no matter what you say. People even told him to shut up. But he kept shouting all the more loudly. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus did not come for the good people, the holy people, the religious people, 
the highly educated, the rich and the high class people, but he came for the poor, the homeless, the sick, the sinners. Bartimaeus did not bother about the people. He shouted all the more louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not feel offended. He did not get discouraged. But he did not keep quiet either. He shouted more louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He knew that this was his only opportunity. There was no guarantee of Jesus coming back again this side. He had no, there was no fixed route. A plan of Jesus. Every Saturday we have a meeting here, we know. 5.30 to 6.30 we know. But Jesus had no timings. No fixed dates. Which place, what time, which date. Nothing. So, Bartimaeus knew this is his only opportunity. And he had to make it the best. He had to meet Jesus anyhow. By hook or by crook. And he did not know. Where Jesus is in the crowd, he's blind. He had to draw his attention. And he had no other option but to shout at the top of his voice. He wanted his voice to reach the ears of Jesus. And he kept shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the moment Jesus heard his cry for mercy, Jesus stopped and said, call him. Every time we call out to Jesus for mercy, Jesus stops to hear us. He stops and says, call him. Every time he hears us calling out for mercy, he cannot move any further. He stops. His legs get frozen. He cannot move a step ahead because he knows somebody needs mercy. If you call him for healings, if you call him for blessings, if you call him for miracles, he will not stop. But the moment you call out for mercy, he will surely stop. The same people who are criticizing Bartimaeus, now they are saying to him, come on, cheer up, on your feet. He's calling you. And the same way, the same people who come against us, the same people who accuse us, the same people who point fingers at us, God will put them to shame and lift us up. Psalms 23 verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So don't feel offended when someone comes against you. Because God is going to take care of that situation. He fights our battles. We do not have to fight our battles. We just have to focus on him, keep our eyes on him, and he will fight our battles. So this blind man, he threw his cloak aside. He jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Now beggars were always recognized by their cloaks that they would wear. He knew that if Jesus has called him, surely he is going to go back healed. He will never ever need that cloak again. He threw his past life. When he threw his cloak, he made a decision. I will never ever pick up that cloak again. In many ways, we are like Bartimaeus, not physically blind, but spiritually blind. We look, but we do not see. We have seen so many miracles and wonders happen in our lives that God has done in our lives. But we fail to remain faithful to him. We fail to give him the honor, the glory and praise. We need to throw off our cloaks that bind us, the cloak of pride. Ego, selfishness, positions and titles. Just as a blind man threw his cloak knowing that he will never need it again, we need to throw off our cloak, our old nature, that we will, knowing that we will never be needing it again. But what do we do? Once we receive our healings, blessings and miracles, we go back, take our belongings and get back to our own businesses. We repent. We confess our sins and then we come back and do the same things which are not pleasing to God. That was what we were singing. Break my heart from what breaks yours. He is breaking it, but we are again putting it, putting very quick 
and joining it. Again, we are into the same mess. So Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And Jesus, Jesus wants him to speak life. He wants him to speak what Bartimaeus believes. And that is what Bartimaeus spoke. He spoke what he believed and he believed what he, and he received what he believed. He was blind. But he did not say, I am blind. He said, Lord, I want to see. What do we say? I'm diabetic, I'm arthritic, I'm a heart patient, I have blood pressure problems, I have cholesterol, I have fever, I have cold, I have pain, I have financial problems, I'm jobless, I'm childless. What did he say? He spoke what he wanted and he got what he spoke what he believed Luke chapter 6 verse 45 and Matthew 2, 12 34 says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks whatever is there in the heart will come out of your mouth the blind man said master rabbi I want to see he acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah he acknowledged that Jesus was a healer he acknowledged that Jesus had the power to restore his eyesight and Jesus said to him, go, your faith has healed you. How do we get this faith? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Continually hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are we continually hearing the word of God? That is why I tell people only to listen to the ear with the earphones on, to the word of God, to the CDs, to the JCLM radio or whatever, YouTube, there are so many channels, God channels, TVs are there with God channels. But what are we listening to in the whole day? That is why we are filled with fear instead of faith. Fear comes by hearing and hearing the news channels, the worldly news. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So only when we continually hear the word of God, faith will come and then we will be able to speak like Bartimaeus, life in our lives. And then we will receive life, life in all its fullness. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. After receiving his sight, he did not go back and pick up his cloak and sit down to beg. That was a good profession. Today beggars are richer than the millionaires here. He could have continued, but he decided to follow Jesus. Once we receive our healings, blessings and miracles, we begin to enjoy. We forget Jesus. The greatest miracle in our life is that Jesus cancelled hell for us by shedding his blood for our sins. Yet we are so cool. We are not excited. We do not want to share that good news with others. We are selfish, self-centered. What if Jesus had not paid the price for our sins? We would have all gone to hell. We, would have, we were destined to go to hell. Do you want to know how we would have been tormented in hell? Do you know how we, we get tormented in hell? Do you want to know? Yeah, let's see what happens in hell. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. The rich man had been blessed abundantly and so he lived a life of abundance. He always clothed himself in purple and fine linen. Purple and fine linen was usually worn by the rich and the elite during that time. This rich man had everything he wanted and the Bible says he feasted sumptuously every day. There was no lack in his life. He was enjoying his life to the fullest. He was eating, drinking and making merry. And at his gate lay a poor man named 
Lazarus, full of souls, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. So on one side we have this rich man with abundance and on the other hand there is this poor man named Lazarus. He is full of souls, boils. He desired for food. He longed for food. He was not begging for food but he desired to be fed with what fell from the, mask, from the rich man's table. He desired to eat the leftovers probably from the garbage that would be thrown out at the end of the day. Lazarus was not only poor but sick and unable to provide for himself. He was laid down at the gates of the rich man's house and to add to his misery dogs came and licked his sores. And the same dogs who licked his sores surely must have snatched the piece of bread that he must have got in the garbage. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in Hades, in hell, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes to Abraham's to see Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom besides him. Now there is a reversal of fortune. The rich man treated the beggar with contempt and indifference until he found his fortunes reversed at the end of his life. In God's economy, those who hold on possessively to what they have lose everything in the end. But those who share generously receive back many more than they give away. That is why the Bible gives us a secret to have a life of abundance. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give and it will be given unto you. Do we like to give or do we like to receive? All the time what are our prayers? Give, give, give. God God is saying, you give and then it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It will be poured into your bosom. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And the Bible also says in Matthew 6, 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So this poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, to Abraham's lap. The rich man also died was buried and he went to hell and in hell he was in torment he was suffering he was burning but yet not getting burnt and he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus sitting in his bosom what must have been his reaction he who was a rich man enjoying a lavish life and Lazarus was a poor man lying at his gate. Now he sees that Lazarus is enjoying a lavish life in heaven. And he himself is burning in the fires of hell. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. And send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this flame. After his death, he is asking for mercy after it is too late. When he was alive, he was proud of his position. He was proud of his titles. He was proud of all his possessions, his richness, his wealth. He did not want to humble himself and ask for mercy. 
Hell is a place where a person will burn forever. He will be burning and burning, yet the fire cannot consume him. On earth, if a person sets himself on fire, the body will burn out within 20-30 minutes. But in hell, the person has to burn forever. The rich man was in torment in the fires of hell. He was thirsty, but there was no water to drink. He wanted Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool his tongue. He was in anguish in the flames. All his life he enjoyed. He never gave Lazarus a drop of water or a piece of bread. And now he wants Lazarus to come and cool his tongue. But Abraham said, son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. When Abraham told him to remember, he must have remembered all the pleasures, all the enjoyment that he had during his lifetime. All the parties that he had, all the lavish buffets, spending that he must have done with his family and friends. Now he must have also remembered seeing Lazarus at his gates, starving, desiring for food. He must have remembered how he had ignored him and how he had walked away from him. He must have remembered how he had wasted food dumped it in the garbage rather than giving it to the poor Lazarus who was sitting near his gates longing for food. All these scenes must have come into his mind as a flashback. Now he must have felt bad for having ignored Lazarus and for not feeding him. But now it was too late. Now he could do nothing. God gives us a lot of opportunities to be a blessing to others. He gives us a lot of opportunities to repent and ask for mercy. But we too, like the rich man, ignore and walk away because of our pride, our position, our wealth, our properties. Pride, position, wealth will not save us, but humility before God will surely save us. Whatever we have to do, we have to do it now while we are still here on this planet Earth before it is too late. And there so we will see, we will have to face Abraham just like this rich man faced Abraham. We will have to face Abraham who will say to us, son, daughter, remember that in your life you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner received the evil things but now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And then Abraham goes on to say, and besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm. A great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. There's a big gap, a big valley which separates heaven and hell. Once a person goes to hell, there is no way of coming out. No one from heaven can go to hell and no one from hell can come back to heaven. Verse 27. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers so that he may warn them lest they also come into this place of torment. Now he's concerned about his family, his brothers and their families. All these years he enjoyed with them, eating, drinking, making merry. He knows for sure that someday they will also land up in hell. And so he tells Abraham to tell Lazarus to go to his father's house and warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. 
God sent so many priests, preachers and pastors in my life. But I was stubborn. I was hard-hearted. If anyone came to me with the word of God, I would drive them away. I would argue with them. But praise God, God did not leave me. He kept sending preachers after preachers. Till one day, finally, he sent a simple preacher whose teaching changed my mindset. God has sent so many priests and preachers to the ends of the world. Those who are listening to the word of God and doing what the word tells them to do are getting saved. But the rest are busy enjoying their lives, eating, drinking and making merry, partying. It's my life. I will do what I want. Romans 10, 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? So preachers have been sent by God so that people may hear the word of God believe in God, repent and come back to God and be saved. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He knows how stubborn he was. He knows how stubborn his family is. He must have heard a lot of prophets. But he had not bothered to do what they had told him to do. He did not repent and ask for mercy. He and his family members must have continued to party and enjoy life, eating, drinking and making merry. He is pleading to Abraham. They will not listen to Moses. They will not listen to the prophets. I know they are very stubborn. But if someone from the dead rises and goes and tells them, they will surely believe. The family members must have known that Lazarus, who used to sit at the gate, is dead. And now the rich man knows that if Lazarus rises from the dead and goes and tells them what it is like in hell, they will surely believe. But what does Moses say? Abraham say? He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced. If someone should rise from the dead, Abraham is very sure that even if they, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, they will surely not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead and goes and tells them what it is like. There are so many videos on YouTube of people who have died and have come back to life. There was a movie of a small boy that was made recently. I forgot the name of it. So do we really believe their testimonies? There are so many testimonies of people who have risen up from the dead, come back to life. They were declared dead and have come back to life. But nobody believes their testimonies. Very few believe them. And that is what Abraham is saying to the rich man. If they cannot hear Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. And the name Lazarus means God is my help. Though he lived a life of misfortune and suffering, Lazarus did not lose hope in God. His eyes were set on the treasure stored up for him in heaven. The rich man, however, could not see beyond his material wealth and possessions. He not only had everything he needed, he selfishly spent all that he had on himself and his family. He was too absorbed in what he possessed to notice the needs of those around him. He lost sight of God and the treasure of heaven because he was busy 
seeking happiness in material things. He sought wealth rather than God. And in the end, the rich man became a beggar. And the beggar became a rich man. So now, do you know what hell is like? I'm sure nobody wants to go there. Neither does anyone wants their friends, relatives and family members to go there. So what should we do to save them? We who believe in Jesus are already saved. So we are no longer going to hell. Hell has been cancelled for us because of what Jesus has done for us. But now we need to share the good news of what the Lord has done for us and how he had mercy on us to others. He has given us a mission to preach our gospel. Matthew preached his gospel. Mark preached his gospel. Luke preached his gospel. John preached his gospel. Now we are to speak, preach our gospel, the fifth gospel of what the Lord has done in our lives and how he had mercy on us. And when we have finished our mission successfully, Jesus will say to us, well done good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. He'll also say to us, come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Let's close our eyes and say this prayer. Father, I thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your word says that if I belong to Christ, then I am Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I have been blessed to be a blessing to others. Thank you, Lord, for your great love and mercy that you gave your only son Jesus that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life thank you Lord Jesus for your great love that you willingly embrace the cross with joy the punishment that we deserve you took it upon yourself you bore our sin and our shame. You bore our sickness and our pain. You died our death. You went to hell in our place. And you rose again, defeating Satan and cancelling hell for us for all eternity. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us as ambassadors of heaven. And anointing us to go around doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Lord, I thank you for your written word, the Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I have been taught. The word, the word of God. I boldly confess. I boldly confess. My, mind My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Heart is I, will I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name.